you know, I'm hearing all this talk, uh, how are we going to save our democracy? Obviously, the Republicans are doing unprecedented, uh, terrible things uh, to restrict voting. But then the Democrats are jumping on with this messaging, we have to save democracy, save democracy. But these are the same Democrats that have rigged every primary, uh, you know, closing down polls, polling places, tossing out ballots, uh, the shadow app, this and that. Uh, I'm tired of seeing all these uh, lib, you know, libtards on Twitter talking about saving democracy. Well, we don't have a democracy. I wanted to ask you, uh, are you worried about the threat to our democracy that they're ranting about? I am not concerned. What I've tried to tell people is that your democracy was stolen from you a long time ago. Uh, you know, uh, what was Ben? Ben Mankiewicz used to have a funny pin tweet. He was like, I don't see why people are are against the Electoral College just because 40% of the elections in this century have gone to the loser. <laughs> so uh, it, it's just kind of funny, right? Uh, uh, I don't, we don't have a democracy. You, you and I both know it. Uh, the, 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 they did a study at, uh, was it Princeton? They did that study where they proved we live in an oligarchy, that if you don't fall into the upper 20% of income earners, your opinions are never reflected in legislation. So this idea that your vote matters or that you're, you're going to get your uh, concerns uh, taken care of through your government or through legislation or politics, it's not, it's a, that's over, that game. So the only thing, look, I mean, look what's happening right now. I mean, Weeks in the middle of a pandemic, we're the only country that won't give people health care. We don't have a living wage. We won't even give people a public option. We won't even give people education, relieve public debt. But they did give $20 billion more to Raytheon. Mm. That's enough money to end homelessness, by the way, $20 billion. That's how, they could have gave $20 billion in student debt relief. They didn't do any of that. They just gave it to – so we live in a broken – I mean, no, it's not broken. It works exactly how Wall Street and the donor class want it. So we don't live in a democracy. We live in an oligarchy. So when they get afraid we might lose our democracy, it's, it's hilarious because we lost it a long time ago. This is officially an oligarchy. And uh, finally, uh, as, far, as far as status quo, uh, to me the biggest threat to the progressive movement right now or just working people is Silicon Valley uh, because yes. – you can't accomplish anything if there is an information war and they are hiding alternative voices. Uh, I know your channel has been affected. Our channel, yes. surely, as we've grown, we're at 118,000 subscribers now. Our views have tanked, which is it's supposed to be the opposite. As you grow, your views go yes. up. All of a sudden, we're going live to 150 people. Uh, a good day is 300 people. We have people telling us, I never see you anymore on YouTube. I don't see your tweets, this and that. Uh, you know, it's happening to you, uh, Kyle Kalinske. You know, thankfully, you had a ton of subscribers before they started this. Uh, it really is It's very difficult to inform people. You know, right now, I have to think, do I really want to spend as a company four or five grand to go to Flint or somewhere else if we're going to go live to 200 people? And it starts getting in your head like, wait, do people suddenly like, are they not interested? Uh, are we losing our thing? I mean, how do you build anything? How do you build a progressive movement? How would you even build a general strike if they're literally hiding your content? Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, how has it been for you? And uh, what's your message to people? Because I think a lot more people need to wake up and honestly start a, a, a Twitter strike, start a Facebook strike. If we have to start a YouTube strike, because I mean, they're eventually it's going to be kicking, kicking us off the platform. Well, you know, what I tell people is that we have to get them to realize that Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube are public utilities in the same way a telephone used to be 30, 40 years ago. Right. So you can't do business without a telephone. Well, you can still put a business. AT&T doesn't have to give you up. They're a private company. No, they do. You have to, you, they can't deny you telephone service. We, everybody knows it's a public utility. They can't deny you water. They can't deny you electricity. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't take away the KKK's telephone because you don't like the shit they're saying on the telephone. So I'm trying to get people to shift the way they perceive this issue to see YouTube 
And so now, like, well, you can still do a new show, Jordan, without YouTube. Yes, but guess who gets to use YouTube? ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, Vox, Fox, everybody. So everybody else has this unbelievable huge advantage that now Jordan Sheraton and people who are independent don't get to have. All we want is a level playing field. I don't want an advantage over Fox News or CNN or MSNBC or TYT. I just want a level playing field. I just want the same algorithm and I want the same rewards if I do good content that they get. That's all we're asking for. So that's what I try to tell people is if those are the two people think you want special treatment. People think that they that somehow they're a private company so they don't have no what they shouldn't this shouldn't be allowed to happen anymore. You can't or you can't run a business just like you couldn't run a business 30 40 years ago without a telephone, you can't run a business now without social media. That's just a fact, you can't build a business, especially if you're in the information business. Google and Facebook control 70% of all the news flow in America. So now they control the politics of America because that's a lot of power to have in the information. So that's, these are all things that people need to start hearing over and over and over for it to finally sink in. You can't get rid of the phone for the KKK, just like you shouldn't be able to get rid of the YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook for somebody you disagree with. So these should be considered public utilities. And if somebody's doing something illegal on YouTube, there's already police. There's already cops. There's already a court system. If somebody's doing something illegal, illegal in a newspaper, that, that's what they do. They get, they, you have to get a lawsuit. You go in front of a court. Well, why is it if somebody's doing something that you think might not be right on YouTube that somehow some Silicon Valley guy can come in and shut them down? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get people to shift their focus, uh, the way they frame and think about these issues. That's the, of course, I'm being fraud like crazy. I was getting 16 to 18 million views before the uh, at the beginning of coronavirus, and then they they that was under a bad algorithm, and now there's even a worse algorithm, and uh, now I'm down to six million views a month, and they brag the thing, and the and the reason I know it's due to the algorithm is because my subscribers growth has just stopped. Uh, we were blast. We're gonna be. We should have been past a million a year ago, and we're just stuck at eight sixty seven. And they brag, but YouTube brags that they have suppressed views to what they consider borderline content by eighty percent. And guess what they consider borderline content? Independent news. So they're now bragging to the other to the corporate press that YouTube's algorithm has suppressed independent news by 80%. They think that's a victory. So if you think that's a victory, then you don't really care about free speech or independent news voices, because that's a big loss for the country, for the culture, for independent news, for everybody, for our future. That's a huge loss. And if you want more, what we need is more voices, not less. Six companies own every news agency. The same people working, Anderson Cooper and Rachel Maddow and Sean Head, they're all working for the same six companies. So, uh, and the same handful of billionaires. So that's why this is important, and we need to wrestle social platforms away from private companies, and we need to make them public utilities, and we need to pe get people to understand why that is. And I think, frankly, the perfect example, and I'm going to talk about this uh, in a little bit when you, when you leave, uh, how are you supposed to take on a company like Amazon? How are you supposed to build a successful union movement if, for example, I was live yesterday from the warehouse showing that they literally built a fence to block workers trying to unionize if nobody sees it. If you're live to 250 people, if nobody's aware of what's going on, you can't build any type of movement, whether it's economic, social. If they're burying what these corporations, politicians are doing, there's no successful progressive movement. So I think- And, and, and what people don't realize, Jordan, is, is one of the ways they suppress is let's say you did you did a video on Amazon. And so I want to go see this story about Amazon. I heard Amazon put building fences. So I put in Amazon fences into the Google search. Your video won't come up. It'll come up uh, uh, the Hills video or CNN's video or some other corporate entities video will come up. Yours won't be. So that's how, so you literally have to go to Jordan Charity's channel, do it to try to find, and that's not, that's a completely unfair level playing field.